Hey folks, <laughs> welcome to yet another English speaking live stream. I'm, um, I'm sorry for, uh, for all my German viewers, uh, but some topics I would really like to film in English. And uh, if the interest is high enough, I might uh, redo this video in German. Um, but I think this is um, a very nice video comparing uh, three different concentricity measurement stands just um, I think I mean looking at these particular models might be interesting but uh, on top of that it might also be interesting to just um, come like share some general considerations I have when looking at these um, devices so I'm starting off with the simplest one and also by far the cheapest one I think. I think this stand is about half of what the other stands uh, retail for. I got this one off Brownells for I think around 80 euros and I think the dollar price is similar. It's also around 70, 80 dollars, maybe even cheaper because um, yeah, I mean we've obviously got 20% tax on everything around here. Um, so this is actually a very simple and easy to use design. You can see it's just two screws here that ride in this rail here. This is um, um, CNC machined aluminium. And you've got on these screws, you've got these little levers here, these little lever nuts. And you use them to make the adjustments here. You've got a little a pole here to, to serve as a stop for the case head. And you've got um, four fixed ball bearing balls here and that the, the case ride on. They seem to be hardened, so this is a, a good surface to uh, consistently um, turn or spin the case on. The, the, the point where um, this solution is uh, obviously starting to lack a little bit is the way that the, the dial is mounted here, because this is a very simple uh, way of mounting the dial. And let me show you here, we'll just start off with with this very simple dial. I don't know where I've got it from. And the way this is supposed to do work, I've already moved the post. There's two different holes to, to mount this post in. This is designated as the position for 50 cal measurements. So if you want to measure 50 cal, you're going to need the whole width of this rail. And in order to be able to measure across the whole width, they added this secondary pole uh, hole in the in these uh, in the base plate. So what you would usually do is you'd move this up. You take a dial, drop it in here, and then you would move this above what's to be measured. And then just let's just take. Um, I recently loaded these rounds. Uh, what I like to do is, um, <laughs> see, I put these little arrows on here to um, remind me how to loosen these. Um, so I would move the the the, the um, right one to a point where um, the like this pole pushes the cartridge to a point that I want to measure. So if I want to measure the bullet round, I, I might want to measure this surface here. And the surface here and then I would move the other one like now okay that's a it's a bit uh, I wanted to show it with this dial I'm, I've got another dial that I'm working with that works much better with this pole position but um, let's try it this way just to show you a general issue I have with these kinds of measurement uh, dials so I'm gonna fix this one and this one can't really move very far, so I'm just going to fix it here. We're not we're not right at the shoulder here, but we're close enough to the shoulder, so um, we can now. Oh, see, the, this one even's got a dent. Pick a different one. Take this one. Yeah. Okay. So um, what I now do is I'll lower the dial to a point where where we get a reading, and now I can spin. I can spin the case here. I've got the camera between my arms, so. One important part of this video, one important aspect of this video is I wanted to put the camera at a at the most natural angle 
that you would be looking at when using these kind of tools. Because this is, I think, a huge misconception with many of these tools. You see them in uh, in the way the the manufacturer is um, selling or making these, but you're you're losing one very important aspect, and that's the the fact that you are going to be looking at them while they're sitting on your bench and not while they're sitting in front of you at eye level. So you, you're gonna you're gonna see now that I'm looking down at it. Like you you're, you're gonna look down on this dial, and this gives you parallax. So you can see we've got. This isn't great. This isn't really great runout here because this is one of the bullets that I mark for having not very good runout. So using this stand, I think using the um, this um, these ball bearings uh, to to um, spin the case, I think this works really nice. But having this dial mounted, um, let's say in a ninety degree, like in a in a ninety degrees angle towards me, but much below my line of sight here gives me really unpleasant parallax to work with. So you can see, I mean, we, we can see that this is basically like, let's say it's like less than five thousandths of runout. It's probably four, four thousandths of runout. But it's not really nice to look at it this way, like from this angle. Um, so what I've done is um, I've um, I've kind of I've, I've got tons of different dials here because they're really cheap and they're like these usually come free with 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 these different uh, indicators and um, measurement devices. These I really love these dials here. Um, you can mount them down here. There's a little rail down here. There's a little rail up here, and you've got this this little. Um, clamp here that clamps onto this rail and there's a lot of ways to mount these in in a way that gives a whole different um, let's say um, like a whole different um, way of using these uh, these measurement devices so what I do is I would just screw this in here and we can move it down like that and now we can look down at the dial from the top so we can we can put this one right below let's loosen this one and let's this one okay so um as i said i'm gonna move the i'm gonna index the cartridge and then i'm gonna make sure that we're we're just past the shoulder let's Jip. Here we go. Okay. So what I do next is I just move this down a little bit. Jip, jip, jip. Let's see. Okay. See, we um, we're uh, we're attach we're, we're engaging the measurement here, and we still have some measurement left. Like these these gauges here, these um, these finger gauges. They, ha they have these little levers here. These lever gauges. They have a tiny range they measure in, like. This one has a measurement range of, I think this is um, half an inch. So see, this measures half an inch. There's other ones that measure like one inch of, uh, of, um, of distance here. This one I think is 0.3 or 0.03 inches. You can see a one full revolution I think is, <laughs> Point oh three one. Yeah, I think it's got point oh six inches of total measurement because it goes both ways. You can you can push push it and you can lift it. Um. So yeah, be really careful. You've you've got to be careful when when um, adjusting these. But now, first of all, what I really like about them. Um. The resolution is double the one that we got from the previous one. So the resolution here is. A half a thousands. Um, that's a bit. It's really annoying with the reflection here we're getting. Oh, let's do it like this. Okay. So what we can do now is um, 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 we can do, go 
down just a little bit. Let's see. Okay, now we're in a much easier range to read and the reflection is less less bad. And you can see now, like this is much easier to read and you have a lot less, a lot less parallax here. You can move it really close to you and just look down on it, look down on the dial while you're twisting it. And this is, so this is, I think, if you get one of these dials and you get one of these stands here, I think you're, you're, spending less than a, a hundred euros these dials are like 15 euros or, or 12 euros if you order them directly from china on ebay um and um yeah i mean i think you can really work with this um let's see let's see what kind of runner we, we get here like this is um this is our one this is the the, the one extreme and each uh, each um full line is a half sorry is is 1000. So we've got 1000, 2000, 3000, 4000, say four and a half. Like I'm seeing four and a half here. I mean, um, if, you, if you're math checking some bullets here, this one was four and a half. Let's grab the next one. Th these are all bullets with, with bad run out. These are the worst of the worst from a, from a batch of 100 I loaded. So this one I would say is um, even above um, five thousands and this one is uh, one two three four five and a half this one's also five and a half i'd say this one is see one two three four also close to five so the, the, they're all these are all four to five thousandths um, of run out plus minus a little bit um, so just l let's use these these same bullets on the other uh, dials as well on the other measuring stands as well um, just just for a general uh, uh, ergonomics of this stand i really like it uh, it's very easy to adjust you just uh, you've got good leverage on these um, on these levers here um, you can just um, the way to dial in a different cartridge would just, let me just grab a, a 6.5 this is a test bullet I loaded for a, for a new rifle so uh, same thing I do I um, index it back here and move it to a point that I want to measure I think this is a good point to measure and then make sure that with this one we're getting close to the shoulder i don't want to be right on the shoulder but not too far off it either so uh, let's have a look here <laughs> okay you can tell this one's really nice like the, the concentricity on this one is amazing like we, we, let's see if we can get uh, it's a bit it's a bit stupid but you can see like if you if you move it close enough you can you, you can get like a 90 degree angle to look down on the on the dial and you can see this one's got great concentricity we can keep this one here also just to have an example for good concentricity so my general verdict for this one this is actually something i would i would recommend to anyone get a setup like this um it's just it's i mean i'd, I'd rather just recommend spend a hundred bucks on one of these have them have a mean have the means to measure the run out of, of your cases. This one also works great for case next. Like um, you can just do it like this. Um, now we obviously have to move this one up again so we don't get into an issue here. Chip, chip, chip. Okay. Um, what I what I would like to do is I would like to <laughs> now that I realize it. I realized that this one's just a bit too far away. So, oh no, this one, that, that wasn't very smart. Okay, sorry guys, I, I thought I just had a, a brilliant idea, but I turns out I didn't. So I might wanna move this one a bit further down to get as close. I wanna get as far down with this dial as possible so that I can get as close to like I, I might be able to just put a little bit of material, like, oh, ah, this is how you wreck your dials. Ah, okay. 
So if, if you put a little bit of material here, you might be able to move this one a bit further in and uh, having to screw a bit less deeper down. Okay, let's try it again. So let's move, let's move the case over to where we want to measure. So we want to measure close to the case mouth, but not really on the case mouth. And um, I want this one to be uh, like a bit behind the shoulder. Let's move it down. Yeah, I kind of kind of want to move forward a little bit here. Okay, right there. And I want to move this one a little bit right there. So we can move this one down a little bit. Right there. Okay, just make sure, like, have a look at it from the side and just make sure that only the ball is riding, like, that, that just this little ball at the end of the lever is riding on the case, you do, that, so that you, the case doesn't touch the lever itself. Just make sure that's uh, the case with these little devices. So let's uh, have a look at these cases. Um, this one seems to be really cute. So if you see that, that's, I would say, let's have a look here. Uh, Come on, reflection. Whoop, can I? That's one, one and a half thousandths maybe for this case. And what I what I like about this gauge here, it's a like. You 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 need you kind of need both hands to hold down the case properly because it's very easy for the case to to slip out here. So I really recommend doing the the twist with two hands here, but it's very, very easy to go through tons of cases here because they slip in really nice. See this one, this, this isn't a very nice one. <laughs> you can easily tell the good cases from the bad ones. This is a good one, definitely. And this is a good one, yeah. So it's very easy to go through cases here. I'm all, I'm, uh, if I had the cases loose in a, in, a, in a bin, it'd be much easier to just grab them and just go through cases. And with the dial, uh, having a, a good angle to look at the dial, it's, um, I think this is a really great tool. I think this is, um, if, you're, if you're struggling, if you're considering uh, getting um, one of these measurement devices and you think these 150, 200 euro ones, um, these more sophisticated ones are just too expensive, you don't want to do it, Try to get this one. You you can probably be, be a bit under two, uh, a bit below a hundred bucks, and it's gonna help you identify some potential issues with your reloads, with your case prep, and um, and with your um, yeah with your process in general. So um, yeah, this um, this one's absolutely sufficient to get the job done. So what's next? Next up. <laughs> This one just came in, and this is a really nice one. This is the one, the new, um, it's called Slant Bed um, Concentricity Gauge by Redding. And I'm a, Red, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for Redding products, for most of them at least. And um, this one is, um, say, um, I think it's around, I, I paid around 160 euros for it. I, it just became available, uh, a single one, and I just instantly grabbed it here in Germany. And about this device, it's a bit less flexible than the other devices we've seen. So you've got, you've got a fixed arm here. It feels a bit cheaper than it costs. But the, I think the design is very well thought through. So this is like not really well mm, CNC'd aluminium. You see, like you can see a lot of tooling marks here. The anodized, the anodized job doesn't look really nice. Um, but the, the the fit, the fit is really nice. So I like the fit. Um, You've got these two hardened, I'm supposing they're hardened steel. You've got these two cone shaped um, say steel um, pins here that the case rides on or spins on. And they work really great for spinning cases. You've got this pole here again to index the case head. And you've got this fixed angle um, mount for the gauge. 
So um, two problems with that. First of all, I have a Oh, not this one. So, if you have a half a thousand, uh, sorry, a half inch gauge, let me grab one. Now, oh, this is also a one inch gauge. Uh, well, <laughs> these gauges, they come in th this little um, finger here, this little. Um, Indicator here. There's also a, like this is the ha this is the one inch version. This means it has one inch of travel. There's also a version that has half an inch of travel, and this finger is shorter. Um, you can see it on this one here. So you can see that the finger is significantly shorter here. Um, so you need a gauge that has a one inch um, like measurement tip, like let's say a one inch tip down here to get all the way down to where you want to measure. This is one of the drawbacks of having this fixed arm construction. The benefit of it is that the whole, um, the whole um, dial here is already angled at a very comfortable position to use it. We're not going to use it with, a, with an analog dial here because it works really well with um, a, dig a digital dial here. So um, let's just get started. I'm, I'm just using a, a, an, a, an easier dial here. Uh, this one's got like a half a ten thousandths of um, of um, precision. So what I'm doing again is I'm 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 losing the right the right slider here, and I'm moving it so that the dial measures at a spot that I that I want to measure, and then I loosen the front one and I'm riding it up just up the shoulder and a tiny bit more and locking it down. Okay, so. What I like about this construction here, it is much easier to keep the the bullet spinning on these cones compared to these um, ball bearing ball bearings here, these ball bearing balls or whatever. So um, the the angle that this is um, is mounted at the angle and um, and these mount these these cones um, make it really nice and easy to. Um, to to spin the, the the bullet or the or the, the cartridge or the um, the um, the case. So let's try and measure here. Okay, so you can see there's a <laughs> it's a bit crazy because this uh, this display is so so crowded. The the minus is a little is a bit is a little dash up here. So um, let's say we're the last digit is ten thousands, so the the second last digit is a thousands. Let's try and move it. Three, four. So I would say it's, it's around four thousands of runout we've got on this one. I think this is pretty close to what we measured with the other gauge. This one is. Let me just try and find the the extreme here. I think 38 was the worst. Let's just get see how much we get. I think this one's showing me 34 thousands. Like maybe we're not measuring the exact same spot here because I think these were closer to four thousands on the other one. Let's try and get this one measured. Yeah, this is like four and a half. This one's four and a half thousands here. And um, this one is, we've got three, we've got four thousands plus, and we've got, yeah, we've got four and a half minus again here. So we've also got four and a half thousands of run out here. Let's try this one as an example for a good one. Um, I think we, um, this one was supposed to be really nice. I'm going to move this one a bit further in front. I'm going to move this one just behind the neck again. going to zero this and let's see. Yeah, 
we're at uh, less than a thousand here. So this one's less than a thousand. Let me check. What do we have here? Yeah, see the the needle is barely is barely moving here. So we we had less than a thousand here. Yeah. So what I like about this one, it's nice. Uh, it's 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 a bit of added comfort. It's easier to spin the the case in in these cones. Um, the it, you're more flexible with the mounting of um, of a dial here. So you can get like these nice digital dials here that are going to help you get a reading i mean i think it's there's a couple of pros and cons going digital versus analog especially when looking at runout because if you just want to go quickly go through a couple of cases uh, this one uh, this one with the analog uh, dial is really nice because you can just look at the at how far the the analog uh, needle is uh, jumping and you get a quick impression of well, it, this is this a good one or is this a, a bad one so um I really like this setup here. I'm definitely going to keep this dial here and um, in this configuration because it's so simple and so efficient. And um, yeah, it's so easy to use, so easy to adjust and so easy to read, e quick and easy to read. If you want to get more detailed readings, um, you, you can also like, um, there's nothing stopping you from putting one of these dials in there. So uh, it's basically, it's just, I mean, it's so, super easy to do. Just drop it in. Wham, we're in there. And I'm gonna put it down here, and you're gonna see. Wow, look at the run out! <laughs> yeah, see, so um, and you can see like the, the spinning is a bit easier here. I don't have to do the, f the four finger one, I can do the two finger one here to just get an easier reading, and I can also do the one finger one just <laughs> with a little like, slap in between. Yeah, so this one's really cute. Uh, that's relieving a little tr relieving some traces here but they don't they really don't seem to be hurting the the brass at all yeah so this one i think is a nice upgrade um depending on which gauge you want to use how much you want to invest and um yeah so um, i don't think is it worth an an additional like is it worth twice the price this one being 80 euros this one being 160 euros um, this one, are, oh wait, wait, one thing is this one already came with an with an analog dial. So this is something I think this one, if you want to get it with a with a cheap and easy dial, I think it's is also around 100 120. Um, so it's not at, it's not the 80 euros that I was quoting for just the the stand here. Um, so this is something we have to keep in mind. So it's not really twice the price, but it, it is a, a significant markup here. So um, whether this is uh, the, the markup is worth it for you, it's uh, it's for you to decide. Um, I, I like the comfort here and I like the, it's also easy to get in and out here. So um, also, I think also a good gauge, just, um, yeah, a bit, my impression is a bit more thought through than the Sinclair one, but the thing, Sinclair one, if you're, if you're uh, kind of tweaking it the right way, kind of upgrading it with one of these little dials here, you can also make it quite usable. The, the Sinclair one with these, with the, with the dial mounted up on top here like this, I think to be honest, for me is um, pretty useless. Like even these, uh, even these um, digital ones are not very pleasant to read. Uh, if you've got the dial mounted like this, um, it's really nicer to have it mounted at an angle here. So yeah, of course, that, that's something that I completely omitted. Yeah, you can of course just get one of these, of these, um, these, these are also 15 bucks these um these styles here this is like the half ten thousands this is the half thousands um you can just get the, these for, for 15 bucks put them in here and um like use this one um with with the with the dial upright okay now last but not least uh, the this one is a german specialty so this thing here <laughs> 
Uh, let me show you something. Um, where is it? There is a German platform. Dum 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 e gun d e. So this one is sold on Egon, and I'm gonna show you what's the original way this one's sold, and I'm gonna show you what I had to do to it to make it work this way. Let's try a uh, Wundlauf. See if we can find it. Yeah, here it is. Okay. So this is a guy that keeps selling these. Um, he 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 always has a has an offer in. It's always an auction. So he auctions off one of these every week. Um, so this is what you usually get. You've got this little nice uh, flat spring here. You've got this dial mounted, like mounted towards you again, not at an angle. Very annoying. Um, you've got this little lever here to correct your bullets, which is something that no one, I think no one I've ever seen recommends. Like this is something, this is the first thing that had to go. Uh, you, can, you can easily re remove this little lever here. It's just, uh, it's just in the way when you're putting um, bullets in and out. So um, yeah, let's uh, jump back to, uh, sorry guys. Let's jump back to this. Uh, so let's jump back to what I did to it. <laughs> First of all, um, it had all these um, it had all these screws that you needed um, uh, these um, hex wrenches for to adjust them. I put in brass thumb screws here um, because this just makes it so much easier to adjust. I just hate it. Um, if you have to grab a, a, a little wrench to get into these little screws here, just to be able to make some adjustments so that you measure the right the right spot. So um, this is one of the first things I did. These brass screws are not cheap. I think these these big ones are like I, I mean I, these things they they usually sell for uh, 130 to 140 150 bucks on the on this e gun. And uh, the, I think the, the brass screws alone were another, I don't know, 25, 30 bucks. Um, and then um, the screw ports were also crap because um, <laughs> like you can see the way I mounted it, I, I moved, um, it's supposed to be mounted like this. Uh, oh yeah, it's supposed to be mounted like this, where you have the, uh, like like this. Like this is how it's supposed to be mounted, but I'm gonna I mounted it a bit to the side so I can so I can angle the display. So this is very nice because I can I can pick the angle myself at which I want to look at it. Um, but I had to do a lot of adjustments here. Um, I I had to get like uh, I put in this screw from the top because otherwise the screw had to be in from the bottom and from the bottom it doesn't fit with this post here. If you flip it around 180 degrees, then oh, it's it's super annoying that because these this little thingy here this this joint here is only tapped from two sides from this side and from from the bottom here. You can you can flip it around back and forth and it's never gonna really fit right. But tapping it from the front here is really nice for my for my purpose. So I can see I, can, I have a little bit of movement here to move the the gauge. I'm, unfortunately, I'm like kind of kind of hitting uh, <laughs> the, the the gauge is hitting this post here, and um, otherwise this post would be hitting this thumb through some thumb screw here. But having a a bit of flexibility here, for example, it helps you um, just being able to move from K snack to bullet run out without having to readjust the whole setup. Another big issue was with this one is um, it's got a it's got a little um, um, ball bearing ball here as a backstop for the case head. And this is so stupid. I don't know who came up with this stupid idea because this little, this little uh, ball here uh, potentially if you, if you for example if you don't have a primer in like even if you have a primer in, like um, there's there's so many un like uh, irregularities on the case head here. Um, it's it's not a good idea to to run the case head against a single point of contact because that single point of contact might change depending on how even your case head is. And in some occasions, especially 
with 308, which is probably like the most common uh, case head that you're going to come across um, with 308, sometimes the, this little ball would actually kind of slip into the uh, the primer hole here and just throw off the measurements, kind of move the, it would, it would kind of move the, the case back and forth while I'm wrote, I was rotating it, it was, it was just horrible. So what I did here is I, I just hot glued an Allen wrench here so that I have a, a nice flat surface to rest my case head against. So I had to do this upgrade. What I really, really, really love about this is this, um, this flat um, spring here. So this is a great idea. You can see below it, there's two ball bearing balls here. And in the front, there's, act there's two actual ball bearings. I'm a bit, I'm a bit um, by like I'm, I'm a bit uncertain how to, I'm, I'm a bit undecided how to, how to look at this because ball bearings themselves, like there's no way they're going to be, there's going to be zero run out in these ball bearings. I'd much rather have two more ball bearing balls here to run the case on. But these ball bearings, of course, help spin the case so much smoother. And uh, one of my big concerns was that these ball bearings would induce a bit of minimum uh, or, uh, or let's say, um, they would yeah, induce a bit of run out into all my measurements. They would throw my measurements off depending on how the case was resting on these. It turns out comparing it against these two other uh, gauges that um, that have fixed um, rests to run your case on, uh, that wasn't the case. So I have to say this this wasn't happening. So uh, my concerns were um, like it w when if it was happening, it was only happening to a very very small degree. So what's really nice is I extended this one a little, gave me a little bit of a, a thumb thingy here. So I I, um, I soldered this little thingy on here so I can just lift it up and put the case in and that's really nice like being to able being able to have your your case like kind of held down on this one side so I've put in these thumb screws here and I'm going to move this one in so that we're at the right at the right length here and now I'm going to I'm going to mess with the front here and I think this is where we want to go so next thing I have to do is I have to align the the gauge here. Okay, so um, yeah, you've seen this gauge before. Um, oh, see, that's giving me. That's really weird. Okay, let's move this a bit further down. See if we're getting better readings here because this bullet was basically zero run out on these other gauges and we're now getting one and a half thousands that's pretty weird see maybe there is more run out in these ball bearings than i was than i was um, hoping for so this is it's a bit weird let's try this again with one of these here nothing there's absolutely nothing there's zero run out let's move down a little bit further down the case nothing okay let's try something else one thing i wanted to do is um so yeah you've just seen it <laughs> let's try this again so I, with all the upgrades i've done to it i now think that this one's a i thought this one was really nice Okay, well, I'm, I was obviously skipping here. Okay, now it looks much better. Uh, I think this one was, it was skipping a little bit. Um, let's move this one a bit further up front again. Let's see how we can get this. Yeah, now we're measuring right. I don't know what was wrong here. Let me see. Okay, now we're below below a thousands. Ah. Ah. Since we're doing a, a tolerance measurement here, like you can, uh, you can go up and down a little bit. Um, yeah. Let's measure these. I mean, this is more obvious. Like uh, this makes it a bit more obvious. 
um, when we're looking at these. I mean, what, I, what I'm trying to do is having the gauge pointed at the point of measurement at a 90 degrees angle. So let's move back a little bit, make sure that we're measuring a good reference point on the on the ogive here. Let's move this one like halfway below the shoulder, let's zero it. See what we get here. Oh yeah, so this one's a four thousands. This one is a 4.8 thousands. This one is a 4.8 uh, I think it slipped a little bit. Yeah, I've, I'm a bit uncertain whether this spring is actually helping or making things worse. What's really nice is that this spring kind of holds everything in place. So you can basically do these one-handed twisting th twists here. Let's try this. Okay. What I did is I kind of angled the, um, the spring a little bit so that it uh, contacts the case a, a bit behind these ball bearings otherwise the, sometimes the, the, I had a contact in a way that it was kind of tilt up the the, the case that, that wasn't good so I think this is a really nice setup now here I'm gonna zero it and then you can just use one finger to spin and that's really that's a really nice way to measure now yeah so I'm left with a bit of with this particular device, I think for the price that we're getting and with these two ball bearings, like if you want to measure, if you want to measure down to half a thousandth of run out, I think having these ball bearings in here is counterproductive, is counterproductive. Um, but if you just want to get a, an impression of, the, of a bullet's run out, I think um, this gauge is also awesome. It has some 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 additional comfort compared to the other gauges, but it also has um, the adjustment of this um, of this gate of this stand here uh, without all these brass uh, thumb screws that I added myself. The adjustment of this device is just a nightmare. So this one is actually the the device or the stand that needs the most work to get it work nicely but once you've put in all the work i think you're getting the best overall solution for measuring because you you've got this little spring to hold it down you've got a you've got a lot of um, adjustment accesses here you've got tons of accesses here i might even i don't know it doesn't probably doesn't help moving this one to the back but yeah um so this stand i think is if you're willing to invest all this additional work and parts, um, I think is the most mm, convenient to use and adjust. Um, this one's definitely, I think, the one that, that's gonna do the job. It's gonna do the job and um, it's, it's the one that I would just recommend if anyone tells me, hey, I wanna measure it run out. And this one, I think, is a nice one um, if you want to get an upgrade, but you don't want to like fiddle around with it too much. It's got th it's got the thumb screws down here. It's got a, a bit. Imp it's got improved rests here. Like these rests, I think, are superior to the ball bearing balls here. So um, that's that's a nice upgrade. And um, the whole slant bed thing here, with having everything at a slant and having th everything angled towards you, I think, is a, is genius design by by Redding. I think they've, they've, they seem to be the only ones who've understood that issue. The one other thing that we have, <laughs> there's one more. Yeah. There's also this one here. Damn it. Uh, you know, this one from Hornady, I, I've, I've set it up to measure case wall thickness now, so uh, it doesn't really, um, can't just really use it really well right now. Um, this one, I think, is, it, it, it has, like they've understood that it's a good idea to angle the the gauge towards the user so this one's really nice in that regard but um 
considering the price and considering that you can only run uh, that, that you can only measure the loaded round la run out um, it really reduces the usability of this gauge to a point where I'm saying like for the same price get the Sinclair like um, because the Hornady thing what's going to happen is if you just measure with the Hornady gauge the the loaded round run out what you're going to believe is what you're going to what you're going to what your conclusion might be is oh my god my seeding stem or my seeding die is shit and all my bullets are seeded with run out so my seeding is shit i need to get a better seeding die i need to hone out my seeding stem um, something's happening i don't know what's wrong with my seeding whereas if you've got one of these gauges that also lets you measure the case head run out uh, sorry the 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 case neck run out you can identify whether your run out is induced or is is already um like um happening when during the sizing operation and um, a, a case with a with a bad neck run out isn't like it, it, there's no way a seating a seating die is good enough to make up for case neck run out so Having the Hornady thing to measure loaded round run out, I think is is nice <laughs> if you're if you're used to that. But you need something to measure case neck run out in order to be able to identify where your issue is. And this is probably the, my closing thoughts for this video. What I would like to um, just <laughs> address finally, I've got three ma like three gauges and plus the Hornady one. The Hornady one's currently set up for neck case neck run out. So uh, sorry, case neck thickness. So um, it's a different story. I think having two of these gauges can actually make sense because that way you can easily measure a case neck run out, then load the bullet, like load the round, and then use a, a second gauge to measure the, the final round run out. And you don't have to keep adjusting your one gauge back and forth between neck measurement and a bullet measurement and you're going to be able to measure the necks all the same and the bullets all the same because you're never going to be able to adjust these devices to measure like 100% identical and once you move these and once you move the once you move these and um, these little sliders here you're not you're, you're not, never going to get them back to exactly the right the same position so what I sometimes do is I'd have them next to each other and I use for example I use this one for the bullet like uh, for the for the loaded round and I'd use this one for the case neck for example so then I would say I, I just throw in a case look at the case neck see like okay this is a, a one to two thousands run out I'd load it and then I'd load I, I'd measure the the loaded round and I'd see oh well it's it's come down to a one to two thousands run out in my loaded round so my seating's probably okay because this is basically just the case neck run out extended into the bullet um, if I if I measure a a four thousand snake run out and I'm getting a three and a half thousand um, round uh, loaded round run out, I'm saying well it's that's good kind of worked out okay. But if I'm if I'm if I'm if I'm measuring a two thousand neck run out and I'm getting a five thousand bullet run out, then there's something going on with my um, with my seeding probably or with my whatever with my expanding or something like that. Yeah, so this is something I'd like to keep an eye on, not just measure all the case necks, then load them all, and then measure all the, the loaded rounds, but uh, measure a particular case neck, load it, and then measure this particular case's loaded round and see how the runout compares, and then kind of get an impression of how the, the seeding and the other steps that you do um, after your um, ca case sizing, how it affects the run out of your loaded round. So um, regarding regarding the, all this run out measurement, I'm, I'm, I maybe uh, maybe I'm currently obsessing a bit with the case run out, and uh, some people might be nodding uh, obsessively now as well. Um, I think this is especially for a new reloader, keeping an eye and knowing and controlling your own run out is a very good practice. I have seen videos from seasoned and veteran reloaders that, that are going to say, actually, I, I don't care about runout anymore. It doesn't 
do anything for me. My impression is that once you've once you've gotten your runout under control, once you've understood which mistakes lead to runout, and you've come to a point where where your components and your tools and your processes are so well like say well refined that you are going to be within a certain window of, of loaded round runout and you don't have to bother with it anymore then it might be worth not bother, like not checking it anymore but if you're still in the process of setting up everything getting settled like getting getting um, getting getting uh, kind of into the the whole routine um, I, I highly recommend keeping an eye on your run out and uh, yeah, kind of find, figuring out where it comes from and how to eliminate it. Um, so a lot of um, top shooters that I'm following, uh, they kind of give like an indication of that they would they would kind of accept a run out of up to five thousands. That's a uh, five thousands on this one is like um, let's say from uh, here to here, oh, sorry, from here to here. That's five thousands. And on this one, I think uh, five thousands is uh, just between two numbers, like uh, between the zero and the five, that's five thousands. So this one, uh, that's, this is why I really like these little gauges here. It is so sensitive and they've got such a, such a fine resolution here. And as long as you can keep your rounds between two of these numbers, you, it's gonna be okay see um so I, um, I myself i i haven't done like i haven't gone to the point where i have actually loaded like 2000s run out worth as 5000s run out bullets and done like 20 shots each and then compared these the the, the groups um so mostly I'm, I'm just taking what other um very successful reloaders and by successful reloaders i mean successful shooters that reload um, are, are telling me uh, so that's that's why I'm kind of kind of aiming at that sub 5,000 five thousandths of run out and um, yeah as you see um, these reloads that are um, that we've been looking at uh, these guys here um, they're all just below five thousandths um, but they're they're close to it they're like three to five thousandths or like th I think I think three and a half to five thousandths and this is like um, why I mark them because I want to see if they perform different from all the other ones which are sub three thousandths of run out. Yeah, so I'm probably going to report back on that. Going to let you, going to share that. <laughs> um, I hope it was helpful looking at these at these different gauges here, um, what they can perform for you, and what you can expect. I know there's a, a lot more sophisticated and expensive versions available. For example, from 21st century. And from uh, other brands that have like nice huge spinning wheels that help you um, help you with the consistency of your of your sp case spinning or case twisting. Fortunately, I wasn't able to get one of these because shipping alone is um, is gonna kind of really ruin the deal for me there. And I, to be honest, I'm I'm kind of okay with how these work here and. What I'm really surprised with, like this is the the Sinclair one, and the the Reading one just got in here uh, like a week ago. And the Sinclair is a real surprise. I really like it. It's not aluminium down here. This is, I think, this is. Um, I think I said aluminium at the beginning, but considering how the weight difference between these two, I think the base plate here is actually steel. And um, that's why it's not a big deal having these uh, steel screws here right in these rails. I think this wouldn't be very nice if you had steel screws riding in aluminum rails and then you twerk them down a bit too hard and you're going to damage the aluminum. So I think these, this thing, it's, it's a solid, solid construction. I really like the price. I really like the, the way that you can, um, you can mount this little gauge here. So yeah, recommendation for all of these gauges, I think. Just make sure you measure it. Okay, thanks very much and have a good time.